Hey, what's going on? What shows up every spring and wrecks your house? No, not your mother-in-law. Carpenter bees. <laughs> Stay tuned. We're going to teach you how to make this little deal. Bye. Hey, hey, what's going on? Todd Shaw with another episode of The Sawdust Dude. Thanks for joining us. I appreciate you so much. Hey, carpenter bees, it can be an issue, especially if you have a log cabin or a house that's a cedar or, you know, has has wood for the, uh, especially like fascia boards and the soffits. And uh, carpenter bees will come in the spring and start drilling holes in your wood, and that ain't a good thing. But, you know, this little simple woodworking project uh, can really make a difference and uh, it's real cheap to make, but can really save you a bunch of money, especially if I got to come and work on your house. Ooh! <laughs> anyway... <laughs> Hey, so let's check it out. How do you make this thing? But before we get started, let's talk a little bit about carpenter bees. We're going to throw you back to an old video or older video uh, from last year where we talked about carpenter bees. So I'm no entomologist, but when it comes to carpenter bees, I know what I'm talking about. Or the carpenter bee. And about April or May, they start uh, doing their little thing, hooking up and uh, finding a mate. And, and the next thing you know, they're boring holes all in your log cabin. Seems like especially on, on beams that run across that are horizontal uh, or uh, fascia boards are, are in the soffit of the cabin. And so they, they bore uh, about a, I don't know, a quarter inch hole inside your wood. And then they go in and lay their larva. And then in about August, the juvenile hatches out. Now, one of the things that you have to really watch out for if those, uh, those uh, carpenter bees are in there and the larva uh, about July or so, the woodpeckers start coming out, and they uh, they'll then they'll peck holes all in your cabin trying to eat the larva out. So uh, the carpenter bees, uh, you can use insecticides uh, such as um, Bee Gone, uh, Bug Juice, different things like that. They even make a little uh, mason jars with a block of wood that you hang up, and the bees kind of attack that and go inside that, and of course then you you uh, get them off your property that way. I had one lady who uh, who liked to use, uh, in the evenings, uh, she'd mix her a little cocktail and she had a, a badminton a racket or a tennis racket and she'd get out there and quack, quack and start hitting the carpenter bees like that. So <laughs> I guess, you know, if that works for you, you could do that as well. And the great thing about making these carpenter bee traps uh, is that they're really inexpensive to make. They're great for beginners, so if you got some young kids, hey, it's a great way to kind of get them involved too. And on the other side, they're items that you can sell. I mean, I sell these to customers, and we've got a festival here in a couple weeks, and I'm going to make some up and uh, and sell them out there too. And uh, so it's just one of those things where I've got some scrap wood laying around, and it makes money, they're fun to make, and they work. So let's talk about what you need to make a carpenter bee trap. Uh, number one, you kind of need to start off with, uh, use our example here. It's just a couple components. Number one is this, like a four by four post. Uh, some guys use pressure treated. Uh, I had this leftover uh, piece of uh, fur and uh, you know, carpenter bees really kind of like uh, pine and fur, any kind of uh, uh, cedar or anything like that. It's the oils in it, it kind of repels them a little bit. So. You know, if they're chewing on your house or boring holes, they don't eat the wood. They're just boring holes in there. But uh, use that same kind of wood if you can. So, uh, but this is a leftover, non-treated, non-pressure treated uh, piece of uh, fur that we're going to use. So let's get started. We're going to go over to the chop saw. And if you don't have a chop saw, you can use a uh, circular saw. Um, will work out just fine too. Got my tape measure. And... We're actually going to make two at one time, and I'm going to show you why. Because as you can see on this one, we're going to do a little flare. Now, you can just chop, do the square cuts, and, and that'll be fine. I, I like to do a little bevel here on the end uh, just to give it a little more flare. because it looks yeah. good. It's a little flare. Flare. Woo! <laughs> All right, so here's how uh, we make our... our uh, our carpenter bee traps and, and they're real easy to make and actually we're going to make two at one time and they're about four and a half inches uh, long like this and of course this is a four by four post which is three and a half by three and a half and uh, what I do is just do a square cut on one end and then on the other one we do a square cut but then we'll do these uh, little bevel cuts cuts just to give it 
a uh, a little bit of flair. You know, flair. One, two, three. Woo! Yeah, <laughs> brother. <laughs> hey, so. <laughs> So anyway, yeah, so I'm going to show you a little tip about that. So my uh, B-traps are about four and a half uh, inches long. So four and a half and four and a half is nine, okay? And so I do a little bit longer just because of the curve and, the, and where we're going to cut and everything. So it doesn't have to be exact. But so then I come down here and I plug my saw in. So just come down. Okay. Now here's where a beveled miter saw Kind of comes in handy and if you don't have a beveled miter saw but you have a router so we're just going to make little beveled little angle cuts here uh just kind of we're going to come down about a quarter of an inch and i'm going to show you a, a little trick that we use here this is called scribing and so i'm just going to kind of take my thumb and move it back and you see how my thumb's resting on that and so that way I don't move my finger, but I scribe all the way around. And you see how it, it goes back straight right there? And so that's just called scribing. Bless you. <laughs> that's Jason sneezing. And that's called sneezing. All right, so I put my little scribe marks here. Now I can take my miter saw. Oh, let me do this before we go on. Let me just take that and we'll do the same on this side and just scribe that along. It doesn't have to be perfect, but see how that, that, I mean, that's dead on right there. So, you know, that's just, when you're kind of freestyling, that's kind of how we roll. Now, I'm gonna take my miter saw and I'm gonna bump it over to about uh, that 33.9 degrees. You can do a 45 if you want to. And uh, this probably on the side. Now, here's why I said, let's do two at a time. That's a nine inch board. What I don't want is if I just have a four and a half inch board in here and I got my little mark, you see where, it, see where the line is and I can line it up on my mark, but I'm trying to hold four and a half. You gotta see how close my hand is to the chop blade. So if I do two at a time, I can hold it way back here and now I can safely make my cuts and, and my hands are well out of the way and just just keep lining up and I'm gonna cut right on my line just flip it over And now I've got the beveled up top like I want it. And so now I can flip around over here. Cut this other end. All I have to do now is just take the, I'm just gonna measure from here to here and that'll, or you know, you can go to the ends and try to figure it out. And so just make that little four and a half mark. Zero my saw back out. And then just make the final cut. Bada bing, bada boom. And so now I have two, but see how I, when I did those bevel cuts on the end, 
and I did it safely by doing two at a time. So that's a little tip there that keeps all your digits. All right. It's a nice jar. Oh, nice jar. All right. So I just went to the grocery store and just picked up. Uh, so these are a uh, ball. Uh, these are like canning jars, and these are uh, little half pints and. So like nine bucks, I picked these up. Now you may have some old jelly jars or something laying around the house and that'll be cool too. Cause really this project's all about using scrap stuff, but this was pretty inexpensive. And so, like I said, I'm gonna sell this so I'll get my money back. So uh, this kind of like the next step that we're gonna need is we're gonna take two jars, take the rest of them, stick them out of the way. So we're gonna take our, our, our little, um, or bee traps before we do the holes in them and stuff. And so we can kind of line line up because this is kind of what it needs to look like next, okay? So knowing the process that we're gonna have holes all in the side here, here's a little tip that you, you don't wanna do because the next step, we're gonna take our lids and we're gonna secure them to the bottom. And like I said, you can just kind of eyeball this Okay, so I'm kind of centering it up because we need to drill a three quarter hole through the middle here and we need to secure this. So what I want to do is actually take a Sharpie and I'm going to put two screws that aren't, if I put screws here, that would be in the way of the holes. So I'm kind of going to go on one corner and then the other corner like that. See how that makes sense? Because my hole is going to go here for the sides and I don't need a screw over here. If I put my screw here, that may interfere with this hole here. And so I do my screws in the corner. All right, so I got my, my lid laid out. And so I'm just going to take, I just got a sheetrock screw here and you can use a, a, a screw that's really uh, like an exterior grade. And I'm just going to kind of punch a hole in the lid and do the same over here. And so I've kind of set those screws in place. And now all I do is, whoa, three, two, one. Now the only thing I do is just take my impact driver and drive them down just kind of snug. I don't want to over tighten it and distort this lid because this is real thin and cheap metal. So, but it, my, my, my uh, cap still screws on there correctly. And so that's, that's a good start. Okay. So remember, that's the big thing is just kind of put your screws kind of corner to corner. Now here's where things get a little bit different, how I do it. You know, I'm not saying my way is the best way. It's just a way. With these lids, I've seen guys, how do you get a hole in here? And I've seen guys try to take a pair of shears and, and try to cut holes in them. I've seen guys be real creative and take a piece of pipe and grind it down and make it real sharp and make it like a punch and to kind of punch that out. One of the things that I do, like in work every day, is install storm doors. Now storm door is, is kind of ambidextrous. It's a left or a right. And they're made out of aluminum, kind of like this. They're not super thick aluminum. And so you have to take a spade bit or a paddle bit and drill a hole with it. So these will actually cut wood and metal. Okay. So what I did was just go ahead and mount this to our block. And that way, now I'll just kind of eyeball where center is. And I'll take this spade bit and drill a hole in my lid. And so it matches up perfectly with the hole that goes through the block. The block. Here's another little tip for you. <clears throat> I want my hole to kind of really kind of go all the way through there. And this is the three quarter, or I just happen to have a 13 16 bit laying around. That's close enough. And so I know about how deep and I've taken a piece of tape and I've made a mark so I can gauge. So when I'm drilling through it, I'm making sure my drill, I'm drilling straight and everything. And so I kind of, kind of stop at the top of the lid. So let's drill that hole. Get my bit all chucked up. Nice and good. Everything's good. You always kind of make sure one of this to be a little bit lower. 
And so you don't, you let the bit do the work because otherwise this becomes like a propeller. And so since this is kind of waist high, it's kind of near man land and you want to protect man land at all costs. So I'm just going to drill down a little bit. See how it's cutting that? And look at that. Perfect. If I'm worried about that little shard there. There we go, just like that. And that's a clean, nice hole. And I'll stop right there about what my tape is. Reverse my bit. And I've got my three quarter hole all the way through the center there. You can run it back down and clean it out real good. But so that's what we're talking about. Now, I'm gonna take my finger again. This time I wanna come up to about an inch. And so I just grab my pencil. And if you wanna take your tape measure, and if you got a speedy square, you, you're, you're welcome to use that. But I come up about an inch, okay? And I'm just gonna take my finger and lay my marks out once again. I'm just scribing, this is called scribing. The bees are attracted to it. Now what I do, I come from this way and I kind of look where my hole is and I eyeball that. And I see where the hole is and I just scribe my mark. Once again, scribe the mark. So I kind of got a bullseye of where I want to drill my next hole. I gotta switch out my spade bit. You want a hole that's about a half inch. This is 9 16 That's 1 16th more than a half inch. If it's 7 16th, 1, 1 16th less than a half inch, that's okay too. Because the bee hole, the carpenter bee hole, is about a half inch in diameter. So this will be good. I, read, I wouldn't go below 7 16th and I wouldn't go above 9 16th, okay? All right, and so these holes, as you can see in the one that we previously made, they kind of come in at, at an angle like this. What's that angle? I don't know. You just make it up, okay? It's not that big of a deal, all right? But it just has to be at an angle so the carpenter bee kind of travels up and then down this hole this way. And that's, that's where the trapping part kind of comes into play. If it were just straight in, they can kind of figure out 90 degree angles. But when he comes up, it has to make that turn to go down, then that's when he's kind of trapped out. Plus being in a jar, they can't get up the slick sides of the jar. So we're coming up here at an angle and you can kind of see how that is. That angle there. The easiest way to do angles, I'm gonna put the tip of my spade bit right in my little bullseye here. And I'm gonna drill straight down at first, just kind of like this. Let my bit start cutting. Now, I'm gonna drop back and, and I'm gonna kind of pedal just my, my trigger here. And now, I'm just gonna drill straight in. And I know I'm kind of lined up with my, with my other hole. And how do you know when you're there? Well, you'll feel the bit all of, all of a sudden there's no resistance. And just like that, it just kind of falls into place. Now, if you think that's too close and you want a little higher, that's, then that's fine. You do that too. Like I said, this is not, doesn't have to be so precise. But once again, I start straight in and then I come in at that angle. And you get a feel for it. Uh, just watch that when you get down there to that other hole. And there it goes. I just kind of clean that out a little bit. Do the third one. Find my angle. Just like that. And number four. And there we go. And so now, you know, you can sand all this off. And so we have our holes and then running up. Now you can see how it's kind of messy in there. Uh, you want to clean that out some. 
you can just take your spade bit in there, clean that out. Or if you got some little chisels here, you know, you can take your chisel and just down in the hole and then just kind of clean it out. But remember, these are wood borne bees. So don't, you know, think you got to have it so finished out because they'll do the work for you, you know. They're used to uh, chewing through wood. So basically, <clears throat> that's the setup for a carpenter bee trap. It's like that. Now you just need a way to hang it. And once again, we're just kind of using what we have. I'm going to go over to here to a buddy Doug toolbox here. You kind of see got an assortment i could use these are staples for um for wiring uh, and uh some with a little collar on it i don't know if i'd use that because we're going to take a string or a piece of chain and uh, and fix it to the bottom of the house or the uh, the deck but i'm going to use these uh, staples like this and this is like a fencing stable used for bob wire and since i already have these we're going to use them <clears throat> how do you get this on there because basically it's just going to go right on the top here. You just kind of center it up how you want it. But I have my lid jar. So if I take that and just start pounding on that, it's going to fold this in, right? It'll just make that collapse. Here's another little trick for you. Just take some scrap three-quarter board. This is just some scrap boards I have laying around. And I'm just going to kind of come. Can you see how I sit that right there? Like that. And so that my lid is not touching my work surface. And now I can take my staple, just kind of put it up here. I'm gonna do this at an angle like this. And these staples, for some reason, always one side's longer than the other one, but I don't know why. So I just kind of start nailing in that direction first. There it goes. And man, just like that. And see how it didn't dent that lid at all? Just a little sacrificial strips down there. And man, just sand this thing up and uh, hang them where the carpenter bees are already going. And uh, so, you know, with ours, I have a laser machine and we just kind of put the little bumblebee with, come on in. You can personalize it. I wouldn't paint it <clears throat> or anything like that. Just leave it raw wood and, uh, and sand it up. And next thing you know, you're in business. Like I said, these are fun to make um fun to sell it's always good making money and so it's a nice little carpenter bee trap so hey thanks for watching the sawdust dude i hope this helped hope you enjoyed it hit that like button subscribe hit the notification bell let me hear from you okay hey i'll see you real soon thanks for watching oh yeah Woo!